I'm here to introduce one of my colleagues here at Top Hat. Um, she is one of the drivers behind our product vision. She's an in-demand speaker on the topics of uh, teaching trends, innovation, and the future of educational publishing. She's also one of the smartest people and smartest product leaders I've ever had a chance to work with. And she's going to talk to us today about one of the biggest threats in education, open educational resources. So please welcome to the Engage 2017 stage, Top Hat's Chief Product Officer, Malagosha Green. Good morning, everyone. Thank you, Nassim, for that really kind introduction. My name is Malagosha Green, and I'm the Chief Product Officer here at Top Hat. So I often get asked, what does a chief product officer actually do? So to begin, let me tell you. I think I actually have the funnest job in the whole company, because I get to pick which features and products that we build. So how do I make that decision? How do I decide what do we actually go ahead and build? Well, first and foremost, I listen to you, the educators. My team and I jump at every chance we get to speak to you about your expectations of and experiences using Top Hat. I have a unique perspective on the challenges facing education today and how companies like Top Hat are really able to help improve education. So I've been deeply immersed in the ed tech space for over 12 years. So prior to joining Top Hat, I was the co-founder and CEO of a company called LearnHub. And LearnHub grew to be the number one education site in India. And what LearnHub did is it connected Indian students with education opportunities within India and abroad. And prior to that, at the very beginning of my career in EdTech, I was the first account manager at D2L. And this was only a couple years after the company was founded. So today, I'd like to share some of my thoughts with you on how we can become better educators by embracing open education resources. So first, I'll talk a little bit about the challenges that I've observed on campus. Then I'll spend some time talking about how OER can help us meet those challenges. Then I'll spend some time talking about how OER still needs to get better. And lastly, and this is the part I'm most excited about, I'll talk about how what I'm working on that um, will actually help us make OER better and why I can't wait for you to get your hands on some of the technology that we've been building. So let's talk a little bit about the big issues on campus. And I'm sure you know better than I do that education institutions need to evolve. And they need to evolve by leveraging some of the amazing technologies that are now available to us. And if they don't evolve, we're really doing a disservice to today's students. So think about it. Over the last 200 years, universities have been the hotbeds of technological innovation. And yet, the classroom hasn't changed at all. And even as the lecture hall has remained exactly the same, the number of students attending education institutions has risen exponentially over the last 50 years. And that's resulted in intra-level courses with hundreds and hundreds of students. And you can't have a meaningful one-on-one -on -one connection with a student when there's hundreds of students in your class. And so when students are bored and disengaged, they turn to their phones. So many educators blame technology for this drop in attention span for all the constant distractions. And there is some truth to that, but I don't blame technology. See, I, I think technology gives us an opportunity to actually re-engage students and to build a better education system. Many innovative professors that I've spoken to are changing how they structure their lectures, organize their lecture hall, and even how they're delivering educational content. One model that's having significant impact is active learning. And I know that many of you here today are already employing active learning strategies in the classroom. And so you know why it's so effective. The premise of active learning is that instead of having students passively sit in the audience, 
uh, <laughs> they actually actively participate in the lecture, which helps the knowledge take hold. But the beauty of active learning is that it really works best when you leverage those exact same distracting devices that students have to re-engage them back in the classroom. So if you're using a system like Top Hat, you're really changing the dynamic in the classroom and using those mobile devices to re-engage students by participating in quick quizzes or collaborating with one another. But the way to have the biggest impact on students, to re-engage them and to improve the comprehension and implement active learning is actually to throw away your old textbook. So why should we throw them out? Well, it's because textbooks, which form the foundation of many introductory level courses, are really not doing the job they need to be. They're not effective. And the way these books have been created and conceived is really far out of date. By the time a student gets a book in their hands, it's typically completely stale and out of date. And this probably explains why students rather spend time playing with their phones rather than reading their books and then paying attention in class. And worst of all, the books cost a fortune. The real cost of a textbook has risen exponentially over the last few years, and it's actually 90% since 1998. So that's far outpace, outpacing inflation. And the textbook, and why is that? So it's because the textbook is really insulated from a lot of traditional market forces. It's the professor, not the student, that makes the buying decision. And so students don't want to pay hundreds and hundreds of dollars for their textbooks. So what are they doing? They're renting them, they're buying them used, they're sharing them. And as a result, publishers have responded by changing the books every couple years and typically only changing the order of the questions at the back. And this used to drive me crazy when I was a student. But still, they really can't keep up with students. And that's because students are now just downloading them illegally off the internet or not buying them at all. And so publishers are trying to change their business models and by going completely digital. But they're failing and they'll continue to fail. And a lot of this is because they're still sort of tied to that traditional textbook concept, the paper book. And a lot of it is because the game is really changing. Once you throw out your textbook, you need to replace it with something. <laughs> and what a lot of educators are turning to are open education resources, OER for short. And typically denotes digital content that is either completely free or low cost. And the promise of OER content is that it will be easily adaptable so that you can align it with your course content and with your style of teaching. But professors and institutions have until now been slow to adopt OER. So OpenStax, probably the best known of OER initiatives, has received a lot of funding from the Gates Foundation and others, but yet they only have about 5% market share. So, you know, why is that? Well, it's because the first generation of OER just wasn't perfect. First, it's not always easy to find the OER that you're looking for. It's strewn across the internet. There's a little bit here, a little bit there. Sometimes it's free, sometimes it's not, and cobbling it together into a cohesive package is sometimes really challenging. Second, there's the question of quality. OER has come into a lot of attack for lacking of rigor, whether it be its graphic design value or, most importantly, its eff efficacy. Then there's the problem it, that if you're teaching a niche course, typically there isn't OER available for that course that you're teaching. And lastly, and perhaps the most challenging problem, is that there's uneven adoption. So if you're the only person using OER in your department, chances are you'll probably remain that way, because a lot of institutions aren't equipped to support you, and there aren't communities around the usage of OER available. So what's been missing for OER to live up to its promise is that there's no one central place where you can go to find it all, a place where you can go and find everything you need, and there's really no obstacles and worries about quality. And it's kind of like finding the iTunes or Wikipedia of OER. And that's where I come in. So my team and I have led the creation of what we call the Top Hat Marketplace. So the Marketplace will be that 
and is that one central place where you can go to find the next generation of OER. When we created the marketplace, we envisioned a place where educators and institutions could find all of the content that they are looking for, and it would be easily discoverable and easy to pull into your course. All the content on the marketplace is OER, and 90% of it is free, and premium content is available at a fraction of the cost of that of traditional publishers. And we've also partnered with a variety of other OER resources, such as Sailor and OpenStax, and ensure that everything is in one place. So I've been talking a lot about what the Top Hat Marketplace can do. So let's actually change things up a bit, and let me actually go ahead and show you. With a little help from my colleague, Robbie Goldfarb. Robbie, come on up on stage. So if you're a content author or a content adopter, chances are that you have at some point interacted with Robbie. So Robbie has been with Top Hat for over two and a half years, and he is the product manager in charge of the content product line. So think about it. In the old model of educational content, the textbook publisher controls everything. They source the author. They sell the content, they deliver the content to you. You, as the content adopter, have little to no control over the content that actually gets delivered to you. So you have to suck it up, and your students have to pay the high prices. Well, now with the marketplace, you have thousands of options at your fingertips. And there's no middleman, and there's no waiting. So when you find what you're looking for, you get it instantly. Robbie. Can you show us how you would find the geography textbook on the Top Hat Marketplace? Sure, Malgoja, and thanks for having me here. I'm really excited to demonstrate these features to all of you, and I gotta say, it's been really awesome getting to speak to so many of you over the past day or so. What's great about the Top Hat Marketplace is you can browse through our entire repository of community-generated content all in one place. You can preview everything, and you can add what you'd like to your course. So let's take a look. When I enter the Marketplace from my course, You'll see at the top that I can browse by subject. Then I can further subcategorize by topics here on the left-hand side. As I scroll through, you'll see that of the items in the marketplace, there's not just textbooks. There are packs of questions, course notes, and presentations for in-class as well. So I want to start by showing you guys Chris Bone's Our Digital Earth textbook that introduces students to the world of geospatial data and technology. And when I click to open it up in the marketplace, you'll see that I got the chapter list here on the left-hand side, and then I have the content here on the right. Top Hat is pushing the limits of what can exist in digital content. And I'm going to show you a couple examples of that. You'll see here what used to be a static image of a map in a traditional PDF or print textbook is now an interactive tool students can play with. In this particular example, Students can plot the distance between different points. If I head over to chapter eight, this one's really cool. So you'll see here, this is also an interactive tool. I can move around, but what's going on here is it's actually showing Twitter activity. So the higher the intensity of the green light, the more tweets there are coming from that location. And as with the other map, I can move around, just like that. As in all Top Hat textbooks, you have questions embedded throughout the text. That's going to assess students' understanding as they're moving through, but it's also going to switch things up and keep them engaged. There are also interactive discussions. So these allow students to engage with each other, potentially even learn from each other as well. I'm going to head back to the marketplace. I'm going to search for a U.S. history textbook. And here it is. So our U.S. history textbook was built by Sarah Eskridge and some of her colleagues, and Sarah's actually here with us today, so we're Really happy to have her. I want to show you guys one more interactive feature. So if I go to chapter one, at first, this might look like an image. But this is actually an interactive timeline students can scroll through to get an understanding of what the chapter is going to be talking about. And in the US history textbook, this ha you have this at the beginning of every chapter. So students get familiar with it. And they use it as a tool to understand the scope of what's going to be talked about. So Malgoja, I'm going to go ahead and add this to my course. Thanks, Robbie. If you adopted a history textbook from a traditional publisher, 
you're stuck. You can't make any changes to that book, and you couldn't customize it to your teaching style or course content. And the digital version of a lot of these books are flat PDFs. They are completely locked down with somewhat annoying copyright protections in place. And the books aren't engaging and they're not interactive. They don't have any of these elements in place. And so as a result, students don't really read them. With OER content from the Top Hat Marketplace, you're free from the publisher's jail. So you could edit the book using the exact same editor that was used to create the book in the first place to add whatever you like, more assessment questions, more interactive components, you name it. So you can customize the content to be exactly what you want it to be. Robbie, can you show us how you would customize, say, a tech, one of the chapters in the US history textbook? Yeah, for sure. So I'm in my course now, and you'll see I have my content tree on the left-hand side, and I can preview the content on the right-hand side and, and uh, deliver it to students as well. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and open up chapter 30 in the editor. Now, as Malgoja mentioned, this is the same editor that Sarah and her colleagues used to create the book in the first place. And that's really powerful, because what that means is you can format anything, you can change anything, and even more importantly, you can add whatever you'd like to the textbook. So I'm going to go, I'm going to pull open the interactive elements toolbar here, and you'll see that I can add pictures, questions, discussions, videos, audio. I'm going to start by just adding an image for my students of a cartoon here. Now, we all know on that note that there have certainly been some notable additions to US history in the past year. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add a section on the 2016 presidential election. So I'm just going to paste in that pre-made content there, format it here, and this time, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to add a video, so you just have to grab a YouTube URL, paste it in. Now, all I have to do is press save, and instantly my students have access to this updated version of the content. Thanks, Robbie. I'm really excited to talk about this next part, collaborating on Top Hat content. So today, so today, I think like I mentioned earlier, a traditional textbook gets updated every three to five years. So that by the time the student gets it in their hands, it's already out of date. So what you could do is you could upload some additional PDFs or handouts, but wouldn't it just be great if that book was just up to date? So you just saw Robbie add a new section to chapter 30 of the US history textbook. And so, he added something about the 2016 US presidential election, which is kind of a big deal. So he's feeling pretty good about himself. Like, he put some work into that, he wrote some nice copy, found a great video. He thinks, wouldn't it be great if I could share that content with other professors? So people can benefit from my hard work that I put into creating that new section. So Robbie goes ahead and suggests the changes back to Sarah. That's right. So I proposed my changes to Sarah and the rest of the lead authors, and they've been accepted. What's greater is not only can I make changes to my version of the content, not only can I take those changes and share them with the community, but I can adopt the rest of the community's changes into my version of the content. And that's really powerful. So let's fast forward three, four years. Let's say there's been another presidential election. I see in my course I have a notification. This time, someone else in the community has written a section on the, on the election. I don't have to do it. And all I have to do is press update, and the version in my course will be updated with that section without disrupting any of the existing changes I may have made to that chapter. That's really, really exciting and quite revolutionary. So you can modify the content and customize exactly what you want it to be, but you can continue getting changes from the greater community. But maybe you don't find what, exactly what you're looking for on the Top Hat Marketplace, because you teach a niche subject. So historically, that's meant that you have to make do by cobbling together different resources into some sort of non-cohesive package, and then hope that your students can figure it all out. Well, Top Hat, you can author your own content using the exact same tools that Robbie's been just showing you, and make sure that all of that content is in all in one place. 
And what's interesting is that if you so wish, you can then publish that content to the marketplace so that other people can benefit from your hard work. But top hat content doesn't just stop at the textbook. What about homework or the in-class experience? Well, with many traditional offerings, if you want to author your own piece of content, that you have to upload it to yet another system. And the publisher's solution, the homework solution, typically lives completely apart from the textbook itself, which is not very convenient or intuitive. With Top Hat, you can deliver the content right through the exact same platform that the book exists on. And what about the in-class experience? With a lot of com competing offerings, you have students lugging yet another piece of hardware to class with them. And even then, they don't have all the options that you would like for engaging with students. With Top Hat, the great thing is you can take any of the questions you see in the textbook or homework, and with a couple of clicks, ask it right there in class, and quickly assess students' understanding. And what about assessment of students? Again, today, there's two main options. There's paper, paper and pencil tests and exams, or there's adopting yet another testing tool. Well, with Top Hat, I'm really excited to announce that as of later this term, you will be able to run all of your tests and exams on the Top Hat platform without any concerns for academic integrity. Robbie, can you give us a sneak peek of the secure test functionality? Sure, Malgoja. So before I do that, I want to note that I'm still in the same course. And I say that to illustrate that in Top Hat, everything from authoring or customizing your textbook to creating and delivering homework assignments to presenting in class and now to creating and delivering your exams. It all happens in your course. It's all in one place. So creating an exam is easy. I go to the Create menu. I click Exam. And when I pull it open, the first thing you might notice is this is the same editor that we were using earlier to create the textbook content. And that's really great, because that means when creating an exam, I have all the flexibility that authors have when creating, uh, when creating textbooks. So I'll pull up my interactive elements toolbar. This time I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to import some questions. And I'm going to pull them directly from chapter one of the US history textbook. Now if you'd like, you can also create your own questions. But I'm not going to do that right now. So once the exam's ready, you press save. That's good to go. When you want to get started, you press Start Exam. And at this point, students will start downloading the exam onto their devices. And this is to make sure that the exam can run offline or in poor network connections. And when you're ready for the students to begin, you present the code. They plug that in, and the exam starts. But where does the secure part come in? So that's the Proctor report. Top Hat uses algorithms to detect suspicious activity on students' devices. If we detect that students are navigating away from the exam, either on their mobile phone or, or desktop or computer, we'll warn them and ultimately lock them out if they don't return. And you, as the professor or the proctor or the TA, you can manage that all here from your proctor report. So you can see the list of irregular behavior. You can see exactly what's going on. You can choose to deal with each of those as you'd like. When you're done, hit an exam and the grades are automatically sent to the gradebook, and that's it. Thank you so much, Ravi. All this adds up to a really big deal. Now that we've solved for OER's initial challenges, we're gaining momentum. Since launching the marketplace this past spring, there's already thousands and thousands of pieces of educational content on the marketplace, and there are many educators across America using that content. Many of them are here today. You are the early adopters that my colleague, Mike Siligazi, spoke about yesterday. You're part of a movement. And here's the clincher. When you contribute OER to the marketplace, you can earn royalties. So that's fair payment for the hard work you do creating premium content. And really, that's the key element that's missing from other user-generated content platforms. As educators, you want the power to control your content, to control how it's distributed, and to incorporate feedback on your own terms. The model that I've described not only radically increases the amount of content available, but leads to improvement in quality as well. And it does so at a far lower price than that offered by traditional textbook publishers. So 
Students save money, educators are empowered, and the textbook pub publisher is removed from the equation. And I'd like to leave you with one last thought. The reason we're all gathered here today isn't because we're simply interested in making money contributing OER content, <laughs> although that doesn't hurt. <laughs> no, it's because we actually really care about education. We love sharing knowledge and we, we love teaching. And we want to be better at teaching by leveraging some of the amazing technologies available to us. And most importantly, we really care about students. So if there's one reason why I'm hopeful for the future of education, and why I'm so excited about the impact that the top hit marketplace will have, that reason is right in front of me today. You've already demonstrated that you're innovators and that you're leading the charge to make a difference. Thank you so much for listening. I will be attending most of the sessions throughout the rest of the day, and I really hope to be able to talk to many of you here today. Have a wonderful Engage conference.